KOFO is your sports source for East Central Kansas and home of Ottawa University Brave Sports. And tonight, we welcome you to the Kent Kessinger Show, live from Primetime Grill at Fusion Alley in South Ottawa. You can join us live at Primetime Grill during the show and enjoy their delicious Kansas cuisine while we share some time with OU Braves head football coach Kent Kessinger. Tonight's show is brought to you by Primetime Grill at 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa and by Ottawa University. Now, live from Primetime Grill, here's your host, Bob Johnson. It's Tuesday night, and you know what that means. Super Cheese Burrito. And head coach Kent Kessinger, as it's time now for the Kent Kessinger Show live from Primetime Grill. I'm Bob Johnson. Kent Kessinger's to my right, or maybe your left if you're looking at the stage here at Primetime. It's good. Let's make sure that we distinguish that i am not the super cheese or chili burrito no no you are you are not but that doesn't mean you're not important <laughs> no that, okay good to know you're a very important person good to know and uh you know tonight is the super cheese and super chili cheese burrito special here at prime time so uh come on out you can join us here live put your order in online uh call in your order I don't know if they would accept Western Union, um, but you can come and get that. But if you don't want the burrito, that's fine. They have other things, too, appetizers, salads, burgers, sandwiches, all kinds of stuff here at Primetime Grill at 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive here in South Ottawa. Braves had a rough road trip on Saturday. They went to uh, Winfield. Uh, pretty good first half, and then the second half happened, and it uh, kind of fell apart from there. Braves lost 41 to 13, and I, I think maybe the uh, most disheartening was the 27 unanswered points by the Braves, or by the by Southwestern that the Braves were not able to answer to. Yeah, that was uh, that wasn't that was obviously not good. But then you know, also we had gosh, so many penalties, you know, that kept drives going, and and uh, particularly we had some on defense that that just really just took all the gas out of our tank. And we were pretty much running on empty down toward the end of that game, for sure. You had mentioned in the post-game interview about the penalties and, uh, and that, and that, that was yeah, that you take kind of some of that responsibility as a coach. Uh, if you would, can you go a little more in depth on that for me? Well, you know, it's, it's, our job as coaches is to make sure that our guys are performing and, and putting themselves into the right positions, you know, to be able to perform. And, and part of that is, you know, being able to hold them accountable with things and, and then I guess pushing them a little bit more to be able to, you know, play within themselves. You know, like some of the, some of the penalties were physical penalties. Um, those things that you can, you can correct by, you know, doing a few more drills here and a few more drills there and, and to be able to to get them in the right position so they don't so they don't hold or they don't pi or, or whatever it is um but then the other part of it is you know making sure that these guys understand that you can't lose your cool um and there was a couple times where you know the old adage in the in the sport of football is it's not the guy that does it first that gets caught it's the guy that does it second that's the retaliation of things and you know, that's where, you know, our guys got baited into stuff. And that's, that's where they have to, uh, they have to be able to be a little smarter in those situations and know what that's what the people are going for and, and be able to play within themselves. And so as coaches, you know, we need to, you know, continue to, to talk to them and, and, and hold them accountable for all little things. So they know that there's potentially some, you know, bad habits that you may create by, you know, doing these things or some poor consequences for you and your teammates. And definitely correct me if I'm wrong on this, because in some instances, there's that passion there for the players. Mm -hmm. And of course they do, you know, falling in, falling for something maybe that you shouldn't have is, is not good, but you also want to make sure that that passion out there on the field also isn't wiped away. How do you walk that fine line? You know, there's plenty of things that you can do in this sport that will allow your passion to run through without getting a penalty. All right, there is 
you know, there's there's times when I know when I was a player that you know you get you get it pretty good from somebody, but then there's 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 op opportunities that will you know present itself that you might be able to have an opportunity to you know get a little back you know and it and in the right way and it it could be it could be that you make a devastating block and uh, you know on the guy that was talking talking you know trash to you or whatever it was and it's one of those things that you know you pick him up and you said you know how about those apples type deal you know and 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 it i think that's worse after a guy's been yapping mm -hmm. and then he then he gets his you know doors knocked off or whatever it might be and so there's there's ways to still play with passion without losing your cool and that is a an excellent point there with that it's how do you go about teaching that to your players and 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 getting that message through? Well, it's just you know it's like with anything. It's just it takes repetition, it, and it takes kids getting and growing, you know, and having maturity too. I mean, yeah, you, you know, you'll you'll hopefully find that as they get older, there's less opportunities for that. I mean, we've had we've had a number of guys, you know, throughout the the time and in, in our program that that have been fairly immature and would just go off at anything and to be able to see them learn how to play within themselves because that's what it is you can't tell me that michael jordan wasn't a competitor out there and you know would would want to you know get after you and he was a great player but he was also a hard worker and he also learned how to to mature and play within his his game you know i don't think he walked out in the court being michael jordan he created that is this a you, know, you always hear the term football smarts kind of being bandied around is this kind of one of those things uh yeah this is i think this is just general competitive smarts i mean you could do it in any, any sport i mean the same thing basketball same thing in uh in you know wrestling or lacrosse or soccer or whatever it might be i mean you, same thing so now you've had an opportunity to take a look at the film and look back at everything were you able to kind of besides the penalties uh, what other things were you able to pinpoint that could have been done better um i think we, there were some situations where i think you know like defensively we did a pretty good job of of um putting ourselves in the right position but when we got tired we couldn't get to the rush the quarterback and and uh you know we we let him have a lot of matchups and that's where you started seeing some of those big plays in the pass game or in the run game you know is is we just you know we just didn't get to where we were supposed to get we were getting tired and, and you know when we get tired you get you get it's not that you're lazy it's just you can't perform and at some point or another i always tell guys that if you're tired you're going to take a play off and and that's going to be a problem for us somewhere along the line so that's part of it um you know the offensive side of the ball is just continuity you know we got you know with our offensive line up front really you know we had a rough time um really getting a run game going i mean we got no push at the line of scrimmage at all um you know we we stood straight up and it was partly you know because you know i've been telling them all week you know you're going through the motions and if you're going through the motions you know you're going to find that you're going to be in a put in a bad spot and sure enough you know I, I got beat inside during the week and guess what i got beat inside today you know on saturday because i was just kind of going through the motions and stuff we're going to stop uh take our first break of the evening right here uh, we're going to come back and i want to talk a little bit more about the offensive line uh, when we return, we'll also uh, get uh, into the game with Avila coming up this weekend, which is the home opener uh, for Auto University, and that's a that's a very exciting, uh, very exciting day for for the Braves to be able to come home and play their first game, which will be at six o'clock uh, on Saturday night. But we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk more with head coach Kent Kessinger. You're listening to. The Kent Kessinger Show live from Primetime Grill on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. 
It's the perfect combination of food, fun, and football. The Kent Kessinger Show, Tuesday nights at Primetime Grill. And that combination just got even better because now you can enjoy the show while you enjoy a blast from the past. Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burrito. That's right, Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burritos are back. And they're only at Primetime Grill on Tuesdays. Enjoy all of your other menu favorites, the full-service bar, and more at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive. For game time and Poncho's Burritos, it's prime time. Ottawa University has positioned itself as a distinctive and rapidly expanding institution known for its innovative educational models, exceptional value, and special ability to prepare diverse student populations for lifetimes of enlightened faith, exemplary service, inspired leadership, and personal significance. With numerous undergraduate and graduate degrees in business, education, arts and sciences, athletics, and more, you'll gain the specific expertise you need for a lifetime of significance and prosperity. Find out more by visiting ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Your parents reached for Vicks when you were little. Now that you're a parent, Vicks Children's Botanicals Cough Syrup is what you reach for to help soothe coughs and clear mucus without drugs or high fructose corn syrup. That's because it contains natural marshmallow root and ivy leaf to help soothe coughs and clear mucus associated with hoarseness, dryness, and irritants. So look for Vicks Children's Botanicals Cough Syrup, day or night formula. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Needing work? Want to do something different? KOFO is looking for someone to fill a part-time position as the host of the Sunday morning Gospel Favorite Show. No previous experience is necessary, but must have a good work ethic, good communication skills, be familiar with computer operations, and have your own transportation. If interested, send us an email at kofo at kofo.com. No phone calls, please. KOFO is an equal opportunity employer. Back at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa. Not only is it home for fantastic food, including the Tuesday night special of the Pancho's Super Cheese and Super Chili and Cheese Burritos, but it is the home for the OU Braves bowling teams over at Fusion Alley, where they have good, clean fun. You can give them a call at 785-242-BOWL, that's B-O-W-L, or log on to FusionAlleyOttawa.com for more information on Fusion Alley. Head coach Kit Kessinger with us here, and uh, you know, wanted to kind of go a little bit further on, on the offensive line because that was that seemed to be a, a big struggle, uh, as you mentioned, being stood up. And there were times where it just seemed like Southwestern's defensive line was already in the backfield. It was How much of that played into the quarterback play? How much of that was the quarterback hanging on to the ball too long? Well, in the run game, it's not any yeah. of the quarterback playing and, you know, holding on the ball too long. Yeah. Um, you know, we – there's a couple times, I think in our third series, we we, we gain like a one yard and get a, a personal foul after play that puts us at second and 24. Um, you know, at second and 24, that's a – you know, there's a reason why they're only – you get three, three to four plays per 10 yards, not 25 yards. Um, it makes a big difference, you know. Now you're playing behind the eight ball, and you got to be able to see if you can get part of that back. And, and then what do you do on third down and long? And you know, just you just try to move the ball a little bit so you can maybe flip the field. You know, it becomes a strategy thing there at that point. But um, but yeah, not being able to to rush. I mean, I think Derek had around 50 yards rushing, and and um, I think uh, Dalen Johnson ended up with minus rushing, and uh, I think that I think our quarterback running around got m more yards than you know he was like our second leading rusher. I think Lachlan had you know that, but and that was and that was not because of pressure. That was you know just bailing out and that sort of thing. So I mean those are all factors that kind of go into continuity that we have to be. We have to be a much more sound at you know our O line you know needs to to be able to to play um, play together a little bit more and hopefully there's there's that growth you know that comes in from week to week and that's the thing about 
getting them all together because most of them played together last year. So it would have thought have been a process that might have been a little bit faster going through with them. But um, but that is a key. It's key to, you know, you set in a running game, key to go in the passing game. And you've heard me say it before is I've always said that so goes the O-line, so goes the team. I mean, you can have the, the best defense in the world. You could have the best quarterback, the best receivers, the best running back. But if your offensive line can't, you know, handle the line of scrimmage, you know, open open holes for the run game or protect the quarterback in the pass game, none of those things make a difference. You said you brought up in the last segment about <clears throat> during practice, kind of just walking through it and, and, and that leading to basically walking through it in the game. Do you sense maybe there's more of a um, intensity maybe now, this week that maybe wasn't there last week? Um, I, I noticed today in today's practice, because, you know, our Sunday practices are pretty much just um, kind of a walkthrough, kind of get the kinks out from the game on Saturday, and then we give them Mondays off. So, that, you know, it was nice. It was nice the fact that it was Monday was Labor Day, so they didn't have class, they didn't have – they didn't have anything. All they had to do was rest, you know, and uh, get ready. And today, today they were, you know, we were better in a lot of areas. Um, looked like they had a little bit more juice. And still at the beginning of practice, you had to, you had to remind them, hey, you know, we are, we are creating good habits in everything that we do. That was the kind of my speech to them after, you know, on Sunday was that, you know, whatever habits that we do are going to be habits that we create. So if we create bad habits so we're practicing bad habits you know we stand up we don't move our feet we don't we go a couple of yards and then we just kind of walk through things then that's the habits that we're going to have in a game and i and i think you've kind of already hit it on a little bit with the, with the offensive line they're going to really have to to hold their blocks and give some time to the quarterback i think mm -hmm. we we saw glimpses on saturday with Lachlan, uh, with uh, with the quarterbacks for uh, for Ottawa, but it it seemed like there was a good portion of the time they were just running for their lives too. Yeah, and and you know I don't know if it, it wasn't so much getting beat as in understanding. You know the thing is that Lachlan's still learning is you know all of our all of our reads and you know and and going through the progression. I don't know how many times. I said during the game, just read your reads, just read your reads. Um, and when he did, you know, shoot, we throw that touchdown pass, you know, in the second second drive, that was reading his reads, you know, and going through the progression and playing pitch and catch. Um, we created, you know, you know, good plays. Uh, you know, Jermaine Ziegler had a heck of a game, um, and his he had a lot of yards uh, receiving. Um, but if we go through our reads, Colton Davis probably leads us in receptions that day because he there easily was had 12, 12 receptions that we could have got to him the ball because, you know, if you go through your read progression, he's the dude that, that's open in the spot. Um, so that's still a learning process for them. All those guys really are fairly young. You know, the, you know like we talked about last week, uh, you know, both uh, Dakota and Caleb um, played in the spring and, you know, played part of the time. And, uh, you know, didn't really play last fall. Lachlan is brand new to our program as well. You know, pretty much everybody's got some newness to them that, you know, they just need to focus in on, you know, doing the simple stuff. We've made it pretty simple, um, you know, with the passing game, but just going through and letting their – learning that their eyes can tell them exactly what's going on. So with – as you bring up the kind of that, that youthful factor, is – is the game just a little bit fast for them right now? And they're just trying to, and I think it's a familiarity thing. It's just getting used to the familiarity of both the guys that are running the routes and what, what the, the whole schematic thing, um, you know, we, we run, we run a little bit of the air raid offense that you see, that you used to see, um, Kentucky ran and uh, Mike Leach has run all over the place where he's been at, you know, the different places from Oklahoma to Washington state to now Mississippi state. And, and so we have a couple of those things and, and you get into those plays and, 
it's it's predicated on getting the ball out of your hands but going through just a, a quick bang 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 progression and you know you could stop it on film and you could say you had this guy open this guy open this guy open and you know your eyes are getting your eyes in the right place um you did that i mean shoot there's we ran a one one of the air raid plays that we probably had you know three guys open on it every single time but it's going through the progressions and you've, all of a sudden if you're not doing that then you then you kind of get lost and then all of a sudden you don't see anything it's one of those things you can't see the you know the forest because the trees are all in the way type deal and, and so is that just repetition reps yeah, it's reps it's it's repetition 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 which is basically where our practices are predicated and it's and it's that will breed the familiarity and now you'll feel comfortable and you'll see that guy and you'll anticipate and it's the, that's where you're talking about the speed you start to anticipate where they're going to be and when they're going to be there and you let that ball go so i always tell the quarterbacks i go go to youtube and find any drew Brees offensive highlight and if you can see it from the end zone you'll watch him throw a ball and there will be nobody on his team in the screen when he throws the ball and then as the ball gets three quarters of the way all of a sudden you'll see a guy come into the spot he anticipates where it's going to be now obviously that's a professional quarterback but it's the same philosophy at the college level is you got to anticipate it because things happen so much faster than you're used to do do the quarterbacks feel any any pressure i mean obviously it's just two games but I, I, it seems the defenses have been well within 10 yards of the offensive line of the scrimmage do do they feel a little bit of pressure on their shoulders to try to make something happen uh and, and maybe they need to relax a little bit more um yeah i don't i don't i don't know if if, if that if i got the best answer for that one i i don't think that they feel undue pressure in that um i think it's more of a recognition because yeah, there's plenty of times where you you'll say all right what do we got here oh we got this guy one-on-one -on -one. okay it's first down take a shot you know what can we do how can we how can we get him the ball um and you actually you know i saw it in the game dakota got in at the end he had a little bit of a hamstring deal during the week and so you know he was kind of relegated to a little bit more of the third spot for us this last week but he got into the game and we had been practicing with him that you don't have to change the whole play all you need to do is let the guys know that you think that you're going to go to no everybody else can do whatever you had all right there's, there's no problem with that okay because most of the time it's we're in a running play and you saw something open in the pass game and it's going to be a quick pass and you can do it and i watched him during the game and he, he during the week we had to stop him and correct it and stop it and correct it but on saturday he gets out there he sees something and then we threw a nice little pass to, to colton davis um that gained us probably 20 yards and that sort of deal um he saw it and he just made he didn't tell anybody else to play except for that guy's on that side you know he just gave him a little signal step back threw it to him it was supposed to be a run play going the other way and, and sure enough we're out the gate so those are things that are pretty simple if you're not just getting tunnel vision and just i got to be a robot and do this so they that's where i think that they need to if you're saying they're a little tight they need to relax and just see things don't have to create big plays big plays will create themselves if you just get the ball to the quick guys well speaking a little bit tight i'm I, i'm probably that way deny you know a lot of pressure being with the greatness that is to the <laughs> right of myself with head coach kent kessinger it's a good yeah. thing we're on a stage because that's rolling off down to the uh, floor right now there's a good drainage good <laughs> drainage we're going to take a break right here uh, when we come back we're going to start talking about uh, the game this weekend with avila avila took on Tabor last week and well they they took Tabor to the woodshed 65 to 24 including 28 points in that third quarter in that ball game so we're going to talk a little bit about this weekend's game with uh, with Avila when we come back but first the break you're listening to us on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO 
and KOFO.com. 132 conference championships, 146 NAIA scholar teams, 43 NAIA national tournament appearances, and 237 All-Americans. Ottawa University has a long and rich tradition of Braves athletes that continue to compete at the highest level of competition, utilizing state-of-the-art facilities, accomplished coaches, and a spirit that only comes from wearing the black and gold. Push yourself to limits you never imagined as a student athlete at Ottawa University. Visit ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Tired of the same boring burgers from yet another national chain? <sighs> Break that chain. With a visit to Ottawa's locally owned and operated Primetime Grill. What have they got? How about eight kinds of salad for lunches that are light on calories and loaded with flavor? Maybe you'd like a big crispy platter of fish and chips. Hot wings? Pork loin. Of course, if you still want that burger, you can choose from seven mouth-watering options. Primetime Grill. What are you in the mood for? Today on Hey Culligan, sustainability and better water. Here's Sam. Hey Culligan, I'm really into sustainability. My clothes my utensils, my food. But how do I get more sustainability from my water? Super question, Sam, and the answer is an always-on drinking water system from Culligan, which helps eliminate the equivalent of 15 billion single-use plastic bottles a year. Whoa, that's a ton of sustainability. 416,000 tons, Sam, and we're already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test with a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Your parents reached for Vicks when you were little. Now that you're a parent, Vicks Children's Botanicals Cough Syrup is what you reach for to help soothe coughs and clear mucus without drugs or high fructose corn syrup. That's because it contains natural marshmallow root and ivy leaf to help soothe coughs and clear mucus associated with hoarseness, dryness, and irritants. So look for Vicks Children's Botanicals Cough Syrup, day or night formula. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Ken Kessinger's show continues on from Primetime Grill at 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive here in South Ottawa. And uh, you can find all kinds of good food here including the Pancho Super Cheese and Super Chili and Cheese Burritos, uh, the Tuesday night special. But if you're not interested in that, they have appetizers, salads, burgers, sandwiches, prime courses, fresh sides. There's a kid's menu. There's sweets for desserts. Sweets for a sweet man to the right of me, Ken Kessinger. <laughs> and uh, they have all kinds of beverages. Uh, and, of course, uh, if if we could, we would call this cognac and cookies, like we talked about on Saturday. Cognac and cookies. Yeah, uh, because that's, I, like, that's but, a good name. But we're not going to be able to do that. No. So it's it's just the Kid Kessinger show, uh, live from Primetime Grill. So, uh, Coach, it's uh, it's a big one on Saturday because you go you go from the highs of having such a great performance against Oklahoma, Panhandle State. Now you dip down in that valley, and now. You get into a, a real big game against the 21st ranked Avila Eagles, and this this team is uh, and it's for real. It's a, yeah, it's they a, they scored some serious points against Tabor. Just absolutely, just had their way with them, um, and partly because Tabor turned the ball over, I don't know how many times in the first half, but it seemed like uh, every time he turned around, but. They have a really special running back, you know, kind of like last week with Keyshawn. Um, now you've got uh, Malik Nesbitt, who I think he had four touchdowns in the first half, five overall. Yeah, he finished up with five overall, 144 yards, average 6.3 a carry. And you get you get 6.3 yards per carry. Um, you're going to make a first down on a regular basis. Yep, yep. It only takes you two handoffs, right? And you got it. No, he's a, he's a good ball player. They have a new quarterback, uh, you know, that we're still trying to we're gonna we're trying to figure out his strengths because he really didn't have to do a whole lot. Um, he was fairly high completion rating. I think he had about you know six or seven maybe incompletions out of only eighteen throws or five incompletions out of eighteen throws. Um, and uh, you know, I think he did a pretty decent job. Obviously, you know, going back to last year and. You know, and the, the quarterbacks that they that they've had that have been pretty special runners and stuff. That was that was a big part of the game for them last year. So, 
Um, obviously, then we're going to have to contain Nesbitt and, and then, you know, be able to then get pressure on the oh, quarterback that is new to their system this year. Brand new, came in early in the in the fall. And, and that is, uh, that's a great point because that one of the things I was, uh, that's what I was going to bring up was this is not one of those teams where, they're going to be one dimensional. You're going no. to you're going to have to find a way to uh, to handle both and both both uh, both the passing and the rushing game is has, at least has shown in, in week one that uh, right. they're they're to be dealt with. Yeah, and it was their first game, and you know I watched them you know primarily mostly on the defensive side of the football, and and you can tell that they had some first game mistakes that that they're probably going to get rectified but they're pretty athletic on both sides of the football um obviously they took advantage every single opportunity they had to score um in the first half uh you know it was it was a there was like 35 and nothing or seven or something like that early in the first half i mean well in the first half yeah i, I it was it was a lot of points there was a lot uh yeah, it was, it was twenty-eight to three going into the half. Twenty-eight to three, and then Abula, and, then, and then they came out and scored probably right away. I yeah, think. yeah, they just poured so, it. So yeah, on. It turned it up to thirty-five to three before you could shake a stick. But you bring up a good point about mistakes that were being made, and of course it could be a just a week one thing, and maybe it gets corrected. We could only hope not. But they did <laughs> end up with seven penalties for hundred and nineteen yards. Right. So, you know, that tells me that they definitely are guys that, uh, you know, that's a lot of 15 yard penalties right there um, with those things. So, you know, it's, it's, it's probably personal fouls. It's probably talking and that's where we're going to really have to, you know, make sure our guys keep their cool and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't much better on the other side you know, this last week when it came to, Lots of penalties and lots of yards, and, and uh, that kind of runs into what we've already talked about. This this is going to be the week that, if there if it was to ever be stressed, keep your cool. Absolutely, this is going to be it. Yeah, because it was a pretty hard fought ball game last year. Um, it was you know down to the wire. I think that I think that we ended up having to what kick an onside at the end and didn't get the onside, but we we scored a touchdown, got the two point conversion as crazy as it was got the two point conversion and then we're in, in a position that if we could get the onside we might be able to take it down there and 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 get some points but but yeah it was a definitely a close game it was one that both teams played extremely hard um, but we had really good opportunities that we maybe let a couple go in that game but they're a good football team we can't afford to do that can't let those opportunities slip away can't can't afford that also can't afford to let them get 32 first downs. So the defense will have to find a way to get off the field in this one. It just as much as the offense is going to have to find a way to score. Right. We just, you know, we got to, we got to be able to play, um, got to be able to play offense, defense, kind of helping each other out a little bit. You know, it's, uh, it's getting off the field in third and 12 and not giving them a first down that continues to drive. I mean, that's what we had this last week. The Southwestern, I think, went 99 yards because of the fact that we, let him off the hook in third and 12 on with a penalty. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't even a, uh, a completion or, you know, something like that. It was a penalty that kept the drive going um, and kind of kept us out there and changed field position. And obviously they took it down and then they scored. And then the, the second thing is, is we can't turn the ball over in short fields either. Um, and, you know, we didn't really do that, but we put ourselves into a position last week where we got penalties that backed us up to where, you know, it's almost like turning it over. You know, you end up getting a punt that that maybe flips the field just a little bit, but it's a much bigger difference. So those are things that we obviously got to get our defense to, to get themselves off the field and got to get our offense to make sure that we don't put our defense in a bad situation. I was – you gave me the Denny Green let him off the hook. but just Let with, him off the hook. We the, had him and we let him off the hook. But I was waiting for the pound on the table. Yeah. And, and Can't, I don't know if we'll mess up like the the connections here. So I, I try to teach keep this table intact. Keep you the know, table intact. Kid gloves. Kid gloves. Okay. Okay. 
I I was I was looking for that that there that but that was I will give that that's on my bingo card bingo card right there Denny yep. Green let them off Denny the Green let them off the hook I we hot we they are who we thought they were <laughs> little Herm Edwards if you want to crown them crown them I and of course we brought up you bring up the third down that that was a struggle this last week with Southwestern uh, yeah. Where it just uh, let them continue to to uh, allow them to convert some of the particular, yeah. And most, of, I think, a lot of those came in the second half too. Yeah. You know, it was it was third and threes, and you know, and even some third and mediums that you know we just let them let them off the hook. You know, you know, with those things or put them in the and part of that was at that point I don't know how many snaps that our defense had played. I mean, they, they there was two drives where I think there were fourteen plus plays i know the 99 start off the second quarter or whatever was was um definitely a uh is it was a kind of a killer for us for the next three series you know we're pretty gassed yeah well in in six of seven in the red zone southwestern was that that's another thing you you can't allow avila that right that that is and there weren't it wasn't like it was short drives that got them to the red zone so when our our issue was you know as i look at it again is you're got to go hard on every play and then all of a sudden at some point or another you know you it's it's gonna it's gonna come back to get you if you haven't got them off the field and you know you get tired and now you're close to scoring and and giving them opportunities now there is one that they scored absolutely a hundred percent is not a touchdown absolutely first of all you cannot throw the ball past the line of scrimmage <laughs> so second of all you can't run past the line of scrimmage back up and then throw the ball past the line of scrimmage third of all the offensive lineman cannot be at the goal line when you are throwing that from the 10 yard line well, let me guess you did not get a good explanation on that absolutely not i why should i be shocked you shouldn't be. Uh, and, okay. I'm going there. And I think it was fourth down. I, I'm going there. I, I know I should, but I'm going there. And and, and, and darn it, I'm. why is it? I, I understand human error. Everyone makes a mistake. Yeah. I mean, I got up this morning. I make a mistake. So, I mean, that, that's. But there seems to be. A consistency week after week with and, and it's not just a okay that should have been a hold or that was that maybe was pass interference I mean it, there is just legitimately things that are what game are you watching what did how did you miss this type yeah, of I don't know if it's every week I mean every week you can always find you can find things um, this last week there was just a lot of them I, and, in, and in big games like that, yeah. you know that's that that that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a group. I mean, at that point, you know, in the game, whatever. I mean, we're already down. I don't know how many at that point, but I think that might have been even their last, you know, their last touchdown type deal. But but there were some inconsistencies, particularly. I mean, before half, uh, they. Uh, they have a, a legal procedure penalty. There's 50. There's 57 seconds left to go, and we'd use timeouts. And they've fortunately done some really, I thought, you know, interesting coaching decisions where they threw the ball where they could have run it out because they were really backed up, and uh, they incompletions. And you know, so we didn't have we had timeouts ready to go. And and but we had, I told the officials, hey, we're gonna you know use our timeouts and and to be able to hopefully get the ball back and try to, you know, mount a drive there at the end, at least get some points, you know, whether it's a field goal or whether it's a touchdown. And so there's a legal procedure. The ball was dead beforehand, and so the clock wasn't running until the snap. Well, there's legal procedure, so there's no snap. But yet the clock ran. And then as I'm telling them, you got to put point, you got to put the time back on the clock. And I'm talking to my side official who talks to the back judge who's supposed to have the clock on his wrist to back up the clock. He supposedly radios because they have all the headphones and stuff, the white hat, didn't do anything about it. Now, I did talk to them before half, and 
I think I was talking to them at that point. Um, and um, they told me at halftime that they made sure that they discovered that at half at the halftime and that would not happen. That would not happen again. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's too late. You could have stopped and at least talked about it. And that was, I think there was a little bit of mis miscommunication. So it was a good chance it was their first game too. So one could only hope that that gets better. We could only hope. Yeah. But we got to take a break. Take a break. We, we better break. say some our hellos. We do. We're, we're saving that for the, the best for last. Yeah. Uh, but our final break of the night here at Primetime Grill until 8 o'clock. It is the Kent Kessinger Show. And you're listening to us on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. It's the perfect combination of food, fun, and football. The Kent Kessinger Show, Tuesday nights at Primetime Grill. And that combination just got even better because now you can enjoy the show while you enjoy a blast from the past. Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burrito. That's right, Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burritos are back. And they're only at Primetime Grill on Tuesdays. Enjoy all of your other menu favorites, the full-service bar, and more at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive. For game time and Poncho's Burritos, it's prime time. Ottawa University has positioned itself as a distinctive and rapidly expanding institution known for its innovative educational models, exceptional value, and special ability to prepare diverse student populations for lifetimes of enlightened faith, exemplary service, inspired leadership, and personal significance. With numerous undergraduate and graduate degrees in business, education, arts and sciences, athletics, and more, you'll gain the specific expertise you need for a lifetime of significance and prosperity. Find out more by visiting ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Today on Hey Culligan, sustainability and better water. Here's Sam. Hey Culligan, I'm really into sustainability. My clothes, my utensils, my food. But how do I get more sustainability from my water? Super question, Sam. And the answer is an always-on drinking water system from Culligan, which helps eliminate the equivalent of 15 billion single-use plastic bottles a year. Whoa, that's a ton of sustainability. 416,000 tons, Sam, and we're already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test with a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. If you owe the IRS back taxes, then get ready to pay up. The IRS has giant private collection agencies actively tracking down folks who owe the IRS. So if you think dodging them was stressful in the past, it's going to get a whole lot tougher. Optima Tax Relief has this advice. Don't wait. Solve your tax problems now before it's too late. Optima Tax Relief works to stop the demand letters, stop the aggressive collection actions, and stop the IRS collectors from targeting you. Ask Optima about the Fresh Start Initiative, one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered. If you qualify, you could save thousands, and nobody knows this program better than they do. Optima is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and they get results, having resolved over a billion dollars of tax debt for their clients. Get a fresh start. Call today for your free consultation. Call 800-348-0269. 800-348-0269. 800-348-0269. Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Are you looking for a job in an energetic and rewarding industry that allows your personality and communication skills to come through? If so, we'd like to hear from you. KOFO is now hiring a part-time on-air personality to assist in writing and reporting news and information. Computer skills, your own transportation, and a reliable work ethic are a must. No experience necessary. We'll train the right person. If you're interested about working in the exciting radio industry, email us at KOFO at KOFO.com. No phone calls, please. KOFO is an equal opportunity employer. And welcome back. It's the final segment of the Kent Kessinger Show from Prime Time Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa. Uh, you know, you can order online at primetimegrill.com. You can also check out the menu, and uh, you can also give them a call, 785-242-PTG, and then the number one. But we got to reach out and touch some uh, people right now. Yeah. Just like the old Southwest. Got to say our howdies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you won the toss. Do you uh, like to start or defer? I'm going to defer. Go to you, Bob. Okay. Well, we got it. I got to say hello to my mom and my aunt who are right. – Maybe listening tonight. I'm thinking they are. Jenna's listening. Uh, we're she's working at home. We're getting some stuff ready to go for some work and stuff. And yeah. So it it's uh, it's been a long weekend. Yeah. Um, and so 
hello to her. Um, the Grogans. Yeah. Got to say hello to the Grogans. Yeah. Hello, Amy. Yeah. Uh, hope you're doing sure, well. Sure, we're going to get a little buzz here pretty quick. And uh, then I'll let you take the field. Well, then you got my mother-in-law, Corley. Hello. My yes. parents are listening to it. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, a lot of people like my goldfish comment. I so that we have people that listen to the listen to the post game. Hey, I know. Um, Got to say hi to the Millers. Yes. They're actually in the Overland Park area, yeah. working in Lewisburg. Um, so not out in Norton anymore. Um, uh, so that's 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 a lot of the people yeah, right there. Modem back at the station. Modem back at the station. We've got we've got several people that have been tuning in around the country, you know, to listen to this. Nick Davis and and Julian, they're always listening, you know. So the staff and I don't even make them listen. Wow, I know. That's, that's I'm, impressive. I'm like the easiest boss ever. Doctor, speaking Winnie. of my boss, he's one of my bosses. Is right out there. He's yeah. he's waxing superlative over there. Doctor Wanika is using, in the house using some big words probably right now. Yeah. Well, I, if you can, why not? That's right. Use them if you got them. That's right. Oh, a reminder to everybody, we are going to join the Royals in progress as soon as we finish up here at 8 o'clock. Uh, but as we uh, begin to wind this one down, uh, as we get ready for the game on Saturday, 6 o'clock kick, 5 o'clock pregame, and uh, you'll hear it on 1220 at 103.7 FM, KOFO, KOFO.com, OttawaBraves.com with the live video. Uh, there, I don't know if there's any other ways to catch it, but um, I guess that I've heard a lot of positive things with the streaming. The video has been pretty good, even though I mean, in the KCAC, because didn't KCAC go to a new so. streaming service? That's my understanding. It sounds like it's been pretty good, which is good. Yeah, I hope so. Although the um, the uh, stats are a little confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I understand. It's a new stats program, but we'll get used to it. So uh, the game on Saturday, we talked a little bit about Avila. Uh, do we still expect to see a quarterback rotation? You know, I, I wish I could say that we would be able to to settle on one, but it's just it it's the the learning curve right now is still one day they do one does really good, next day the next one does really good, and you know it's it's such an even. It's an even level um, that we'll see. Hopefully, by the end of the week, maybe we have it. You know, we have it set out a little bit because you know you got uh, the first week. You you had uh, the you know Caleb started and Dakota played pretty good this last week. You know, Lachlan goes in has a pretty decent you know first couple of series. You know, you know Caleb comes in, then Lachlan comes in, and then. And then after that, I mean, you could tell that he was new. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you watch on film that we got to be able to correct. Um, the, the reason why we only scored, you know, two touchdowns and they were for both in the first half type thing, um, that, uh, that we have to be much more solid. So I'm hoping that with more repetitions this week, you know, we can kind of get settled. And this, we've got, I think by, this is like the end all be all week. At that point, it's just going to be, what they say in fishing, you got to fish or cut bait, and we're going to have to just go with one and give them majority of the reps. Well, and hopefully something can get going on the passing game. We kind of touched on it earlier with the defenses really not respecting the Braves' passing game. And so you're not really – well, if the offensive line does a great job, they should open That's, up to uh, it, it comes right back yeah. to that. We just have to be able to establish the line of scrimmage. And if we can do that, your passing game is phenomenal because nobody's – they're trying to bulk up against the run and you get the one-on-one -on -one matchups. I know that right now, as you said, the, the passing game is an intermediate. It's kind of the short to intermediate. Yeah, stuff. it's – you know, we don't have to chuck it a mile and a half down. I mean, that will come the more people try to – more people try to put people in the box to stop us, the more that we'll throw it, throw it deep. It's kind of like if you go back to the 2014 year where everybody kind of stacked the box to try to stop Luke Lundy. And uh, I know Josh Stangby had a career year. I mean, got him, got him a shot in the NFL, you know, type deal. And it was because we could play action, we could throw it over the top. So we've got, we're going to have to be able to play pitch and catch in those situations. But if we can establish the line of scrimmage, we'll be able to have better opportunities. 
is, and is it just about, I mean, as we mentioned with the line blocking, but also trying to find those open spaces because everyone's uh, up front. I mean, most of the time yeah. it's just that one safety back there. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, how do you build your formations to kind of take advantage of that? Well, um, you know, there's different things that we do. We do different movements. We have, you know, we have different kind of schemes that are going to allow us to be able to get matchups. And I think that there's a couple that we're evolving to that, you know, that we decided last week, we're like, okay, this is probably too much learning because you, there's a point where you get too much overload where they're not going to run anything good. And so, um, that is where we need to, you know, be able to find those matchups and our guys can learn, you know, cause we put a couple things in little tweaks this week that it might give us some, might give us some good one-on-one -on -one matchups and some of the things that we're seeing. So we'll just see if we can execute it on Saturday. Defensively for the Braves, it, 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 we've touched on it a little bit. Got to get off the field, especially on third down. Uh, but I, it's cliche to always say getting off to a fast start, but I feel like this week that's really going to be important. Yeah, I think that we, what, regardless of, you know, it, when um, Avila gets the football, we need to come out there and have a pretty good go at it defensively and and if we do the way that we started in uh oklahoma panhandle we're great if we do it for the first three or four plays that we three plays that we had against avalo we're going to be we're going to be in pretty good situation you know it's 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 in then making sure that we don't give up the penalties or whatever the, the drive continuers we got to stop those uh, it's just one week of film but have you been able to pinpoint areas of attack against Avila, uh, Avila's defense? Well, and we go back and use last year too. I mean, so it it's it is you can see a little bit. You got to be able to look past where they're maybe making some scheme um, mistakes because it's their first game, and say you know that's probably not how they're going to run it. <laughs> And, and and say well if they do then this is what we got to do but if they if they run it the way that we think they're supposed to run it then how does our how does our passing game how does our running game how's our protection scheme offensively go from their offensive standpoint it's probably a little bit easier just to try to get tendencies but then again you only have one game tendencies as opposed to multiple games to be able to say because they could say all right we did this but now we're going to do this completely different do you expect game and ship again this week? As obviously uh, Southwestern's quarterback was nowhere to be found on the two deep. Yeah, no, we we had heard some inklings of that, but yeah, he was definitely not on the two deep. I don't think that they're. I think what they might do is if they have some guys that get cleared in their second week, that could be a little bit of a of a of a gamesmanship, but. Yeah, we had heard about this guy, and then when we got to the field and we saw who was warming up, we, we knew he was the guy. Well, Coach, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Thank you so much You're for welcome. being here. And yeah. We will talk to you on Saturday. Before and after the game. Before and after the game. And again, reminder, 5 o'clock for pregame, 6 o'clock for the kickoff at Advent Health Field. Yeah, we're not changing it. No. We're not. We're not. Whatever. Weather, smether. That's going to wrap it up for us this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you on Saturday from Advent Health Field. Down is not in time. But Merrifield was there to take the throw, and it's steal number 10 for Jorge Mateo with a head first slide. Right now, Pedro Grafol is on the phone with Bill Duplissy in the video room to see if. It was worth the challenge, and Billy says, nope, it's not. KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM.